for Doomhammer. Watch your back. Part of my quiet comes from I have this terrible stirring feeling in my stomach about this deck. I think it's time to set a hard limit of if I fall to rank 5, it'll be time to take drastic measures. Me. I, I keep thinking maybe it's time to take the drastic measure, but honor kind of makes me want to stick with it. That's fine. Wait, how? No, that's not too weird. There, there was something that felt weird about his exchange. Like, there could have been something better, but maybe there wasn't. so that it doesn't get a go on my loot hoarder. And as stands, he cannot play Fire Elemental, so no huge concern about backstabbing that. Doomhammer, though. Hmm. That's pretty good for him. One equals three, but still this one does not actually die to hammer, so I guess I'll do that. Into the breach. Here we go. I wanted to put it on this one so the fire elemental gets slightly less value when it hits a three health guy instead of a one health guy, but there is the threat of Earth Shock, even though that mainly deals with it anyways, and Mm. There's like that slight concern that he would use the Doom Hammer to kill my 6 1, but that would leave him at 3, but that actually might be good enough. In this case, it would have been better to put it on the 2 1. Tough call to make. Hmm. Here's where it's a lot worse to be this deck than it is to be here. A lot worse to have this hero ability rather than tap. The light protects me. Success. 
seven, eight. I'm going to get possibly two turns. Well, that was a really good series of draws. Um, hmm. Okay. I actually win the next turn then. Here we go. Which means no reason to kill mana to that totem. So my best chances come from backstabbing a one-one and gaining one health. Job done. Six, seven, nine. He needs to do five damage. Okay, if he plays a taunt, I lose. If he does five damage, I lose. But if he doesn't, then I got a chance. My shield for Argus. That's five, so that'll be enough. Darn. No, I couldn't get through this anyways. Well played. Ah! I need to table the flip. Okay. There's not enough time to do an arena here. So. We're going all in. Come on. That would have been a really good pack earlier on. My own hands. That's good. It's a rare. Scrub. Oh, you go horn bow. It's a hundred. Oh my gosh. This was uh done in the moment right after the Eagle Horn Boner. Extra 60 dust in the bank. Wow. That's a lot of dust then. You're about to see the table flip moment. I believe that this deck has hit the limit. Originally, I created this deck because I thought it could one-up Zoo because the class card came out for this deck over Zoo, and I wanted to just do something that wasn't Zoo. But this style of deck just doesn't quite work out, and I think that the more aggressive version of Rogue could work out in a different metagame, but right now there's too much Zoo for this to work out. So, I declare bankruptcy! But it's okay, because our assets can be dissolved and changed to another deck, which will use most of all those cards. Oh, I do need some uh, other cards though. Well, oh, alright. Let's see, what am I missing from this deck? The two flame imps, the two doom guards, the two knife jugglers, that's six, and the two soul fires, so that's the eight cards missing. Let's see, in order of importance, I think that knife juggler is really, really strong. This is also a card I'd considered putting in my, uh, rogue deck, but nah. 
Oh, Flame Imp obviously must be made. So right now it's just missing the two Doom Guards and the two Soul Fires. The Soul Fires are gained by hitting level 10. The Doom Guards. And get 120 there. So I need 80. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. How much do I have? 70 plus 120 is 190, which means I need 10 dust. I am 10 dust short of zoo. Really? Okay, well I can just do one doom guard for now and then uh, use the origin commander later. And get rid of all these cards that I considered running in value rogue a little bit enough that I kept them around. Why do I have a young dragon huh? It's only 20. Uh oh. The Elven Archers are actually a bit better than usual because of all the uh, zero around. Alright, so the uh, changes I would make to this would be minus one Argent Commander, plus one Doom Guard. Oh, and plus two Soul Fire, minus a Loot Hoarder, and minus an Elven Archer. But close enough. Uh, first of all, I think before I go into playing the game, Soulfire is kind of an essential card. So... Let's be casual. Wait, I have a gold card? No. Surely I would see it. Oh, I actually have cards that are... Oh, I forgot. Ooh. Check these cards. Rip, rogue. You are officially buried. Oh, that's... Alright, I can take this. Another Doom Zarg. That another Doom Guard is pretty good. Uh, put that in charge instead of a Loot Hoarder. And the Soul Fire will replace the Argent Commander and the Elven Archer. I don't have a gold card, do I? Oh, I have a gold Harvest Club. When did I get that? It's pretty nice. That's all the cards I'm going to craft, though. So the only two changes are plus two soul fire, minus one. So in order to do that, I will do this. Okay. All right, level six. That's good. Oh, you get both. That was pretty good. Oh, I thought, I thought you had to get to level ten. Okay. No need for the sacrificial pact.
So, goodbye Argent Commander and Elven Archer. We keep the utility of a Hellfire. Especially with how many zoo there is, it's a nice uh, table turner sometimes. And what a long and arduous journey we've had. To some extent, this turns out to be a good continuation of Free-to-Play Rogue for a few reasons. A lot of the cards used in Free-to-Play Rogue are used here as well. Um, two Defender of Argus, two Dark Iron Dwarf, two Shattered Sun Cleric, two Harvest Golem, two Nerubian Egg, Two Haunted Creeper, two Argent Squire, to some extent like the Abusive Sergeant was in there for an earlier incarnation, so that's like 14, 16 cards. Uh, it's got the Soul Fire instead of the Eviscerate, the Elven Archer just because it's good anti-zoo, the Voidwalker, it's more early game really. Direlf Alpha is this Dex, I don't even know how to compare it. So okay, this is sort of like Backstab, this is kind of like... It can't be compared, kind of like the fight, whatever. The Knife Juggler is just a really nice efficient card. Hellfire is kind of like the Blade Flurry. The Doom Guard is the Argent Commanders. And then instead of Drake's and Nomish Inventors, you have the Hero Ability. So actually, a good thing to compare Knife Juggler to would be like a Gnomish Inventor, since you can play it and then you tap, and then you've played a 3-2, and then you draw a card. It, it's not that clear. Thing. And then I started having the idea that uh, it's reasonable against everything. And then I had the idea, okay, it's slightly below average against everything. So might as well run something that's average against everything, which is like the definition of zoo. And it's above average against some things, below average against some things. But this is like your benchmark deck to beat, especially given how many of them are out there. I did do a free-to-play Warlock before, but it was never published on YouTube because it was outdated. And this one's running two extra cards, so... People know that this can be done, but for science it should be published. For Doomhammer, your soul shall be mine! Alright, so I got Flame Imp, Haunted Creeper, Dark Iron, no. Plus, I've always been meaning to get this free-to-play Warlock. Uh, why am I putting quotation marks? It is completely free -to -play. On the YouTubes, because this is the deck that I encourage people to start with. It's relatively straightforward to play. In fact, there are rumors of bots playing it because it is that straightforward. However, in order to play it well, and you can certainly play it better than a bot. You have to account for certain things. But yeah, it does teach you a lot about just general mana efficiency and card advantage. This is a deck that doesn't go for the opponent's face. You trade off for your opponent's stuff. You tap to gain advantages. It's tried and true. It's good. Play the egg to kind of counter lightning storm. This is kind of a nightmare for the shaman because there's no elegant way to deal with this. Even the lightning storm will leave a mess behind. I probably will aim to not activate my own egg because of lightning storm. Yeah. 
Even though I said I wouldn't activate my egg, I still probably should have placed the wolf next to the egg. Actually, what I should have done is placed the egg closer to the center. As a general tip, in zoo, you should place the Nuruvian egg near the center of the board. And here's where the power over the rogue is shown. I don't have any playable cards. Looks like I have to waste mana, but no! Bam! Life tap! Oh! Oh no, I'm out of place. This card is like blade flurry, it's worthless, and I've got an eviscerate. But oh man, I can use my mana efficiently because of life tap. And that is the glory of this class. Um one, three, four, eight, twelve. I think soul fire first is good. Actually I would like a decreased chance of dis uh, increased chance of discarding a hellfire, that's fine. There are two Doom Guards left in this deck, so it's a question of if I want to risk this tap going into Doom Guard. And I'm going to not risk that. So if I tap, I go down to four. Uh, four and six are about the same number. Yeah. And yet I hold some regret for tapping there, since... Uh, yeah, there was not actually anything I could have drawn to help. Wouldn't matter either way. Close. I just unfortunately... I mean, it happens. Wow, this looked at, like a dominating board for me for a while, but it's just that these haunted creepers and eggs are doing damage. It happens. Let the hunt begin. Your soul shall be mine! Mulligan strategy is pretty simple. If you don't have a 1 and you're going first, try to get a 1. Unless you have Soulfire against what you think is an aggro deck. This hand is really bad. trade to enable more cards to be able to be played. This is one of those really unusually bad openings for Zoo.
Uh, oh, uh, yes. I should still play it, and then I should use the Doom Guard to trade. like I had a chance before you pulled off that combo, despite this uh, quite awful start. Bark Pedro. It's a, I mean, a popular card. Back, rather. So we're back. Uh, becoming such a popular card because of that. We must cleanse the Sunwell. What's the word? Would I rather activate the egg, or would I rather one-shot the? I want to activate this eventually. We must cleanse the. This sun is a well. much more popular card now that web spinner is in. I am a big dummy. That is not what I should have done. Actually, no, I have no chance. If I had three health, though, tapping first was... No, actually... No, there was just no way. So I lost my first two games. We'll see what happens. That hand was terrible. It's one of those decks where, for the most part, you have to... It's like a trust game with Hearthstone. You fall back and then count on Hearthstone, the game, to catch you. Gul'dan versus Valira. Watch your back. Your soul shall be mine. All right, try to keep Argent Square and X, and then nice, excellent opening hand. The pleasure is mine. The light protects me. Why do you fall? As you command. There's this raging debate in chat about Oh man, I don't like Soulfire, I don't like Doom Guard. These random discards always get me, and I always end up with all of them together. You just have to believe that it won't happen. And yes, there's some times where it will happen, and there's times suck, but... You have to look at the big picture, and play the stats. That's how you uh, play Zoo, I'd say. You yeah, mostly play the stats, and play the obvious strong play each turn. Uh, the obvious play, though, isn't always that obvious, especially to someone who's starting. Which is why I really encourage this deck to start with. You have to be willing to tap, uh, just lose the life, realize that this is not a game about life. You have to be willing to make a few, but not that many hard choices, I'd say. But perhaps the choices I think aren't hard are hard for those starting out. I will say there is a reason why Put this apple on your head. some top players dislike playing Zoo on ladder. Not just top players, there's a general consensus. It's because you don't have that much of an outcome decider with this deck. 
Which is to say that with good play, you might be able to eke out an extra like two to five damage. Uh, although, if you're jumping from like a beginner zoo play to an intermediate level of zoo play, you might be able to, in the long run, get an extra 15 damage in and protect yourself from 10 damage. It's kind of crazy how much you can optimize when you're just starting out the deck, but once you get the basic mechanics out of the way, uh, that's where there's not that much control over what goes on, and then you just have to trust in your deck. And some people don't like that, and that's fair. I think tap defender here. This is one of those cases where the choice isn't that easy. No, I think it's playing both of these. Alright, so that's 259. Or, I could just ignore that guy. Perhaps it is hurting him as well. My seal for Argo! Well played. Argo. The pleasure is mine. 